Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon. Okay, salam sejahtera. So kita continue on lecture series 3. Okay, this is your three, your series 3. Maksudnya week 2. Correct. So, hmm, semua okay dah? <laughs> right. So, uh, for this lecture, okay, uh, we're going to really uh, look at, okay, kita nak ada property management standard. Okay, uh, last week, um, sudah pesan untuk semua orang ada property management standard. So, hari ni kita akan review, macam dekat saya ni, kita ada property management standard tu. Semua orang dah ada dan saya lihat ada orang yang dah bagi kat dalam uh, WhatsApp group, right? Okay, so hari ni kita akan pergi sekejap lagi ni pergi detail apa yang ada kat dalam property management standard ni. Okay, right. So, okay. Yang pertama, okay. Semua orang mesti ada ni. As a property manager. Yang kedua, semua mesti baca ni daripada kulit depan dan kulit belakang. Jangan baca kulit dan kulit tau. Maknanya kulit hingga kulit. Okay? Right. So, dalam uh, property management standard ini, ini adalah property management standard yang dikeluarkan uh, oleh board of valuer. Kat situ nampak kan? Okay, the board, kita tengok kat bawah ni. The board of valuers appraisal apa? estate agents and property managers. Okay, ini is your board. As a professional valuer, as, a, uh, as a property managers and as an agent, this is your board. And this property management standard, okay, dibangunkan oleh board dan ini adalah edition yang kedua. Okay, edition yang kedua. Okay, ini saya punya copy lah. Ini copy. Right. Okay, so dalam konteks um, uh, ni, okay, hari ni, kita akan tengok on the definitions okay and meaning as used in the standard apa dia property manager okay mm. right so as property manager uh, property manager kena faham ni tadi kita dah explain uh, generally details uh, what is basically uh, property management roles and responsibilities uh, what exactly is your duty and task okay right and this one is really look at this standard okay Right. So, apa yang kita tengok dalam standard ni? Okay. First, dalam standard ni, dia ada definitions and meanings as used in the standard. And setiap definition and meaning ni, you can faham apa dia. Okay. For example, dalam ni ada Act 242. Dia cakap pasal Act 318, Act 757. Okay. They are, they define what is mean by board. Siapa tak tahu board tu apa? And then what is buildings maintenance? Okay, and building maintenance account, building maintenance fund, bylaws, commissioner, right? This is the words or definitions and meaning yang property manager can faham. Common properties, so lepas ni bila kita kata common properties, apa di common properties? Okay, developer, local authority area, joint management body, management corporation, management fund, right? All these things mesti hadap. Okay, and then the concept of managing agent, property-based business, property management, okay. So, siapa yang ada sekarang ni dekat masing-masing, right? Um, tolong buka. Okay, saya akan buka sesuatu, kita akan go through. Okay, right. Right, sebelum kita pergi kepada the property manager. Okay, so basically dalam standard ni, okay, dalam standard ni, selepas dalam muka surat, Uh, tiga Roman, okay, right, dia ada table of content. Dan kalau you tengok, the table of content ni, okay, dengan weekly content dalam kita punya CI, most of the content ni kita explain, kita cover. Okay, why? Because each of the content ni nanti, itu adalah skills atau perkara yang sekurang-kurangnya. Okay, atau within the standard, property manager kena faham. Okay, that's why kalau kita buka yang pertama, Okay, dia ada definitions and meanings as used in standard. Okay, kita ada definitions and meaning as used in the standard. And then standard one, kita ada standard one sampai lah you ada standard 11. Okay, right? So standard one apa? The property manager. 
is explain what is property manager. Standard two, they are talking about the appointment of a property manager. Alright? Okay. Uh, kalau orang tak ada uh, standard ni, boleh 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 refer nanti. Okay? Right. So, and then standard three, dia cakap pasal apa? Handing over or taking over of property. What, how property management uh, should do. Okay. Standard four, building management. Standard five, maintenance management. Standard six, financial management. Standard seven, administrative management. Standard eight, insurance management. Insurance management is very important and you must well estimate the insurance. Otherwise, nanti tak cover. Okay. And then, standard six, health, safety and emergency management. Okay. You have to establish SOP. Okay. And then, standard 10, currency at the list management. And standard 11, facilities management. Right? So, facilities management ni untuk tahun akhir ataupun tahun empat kita ada option subject on facilities management. Jadi, you can take it if you want to know the detail. Okay. Right. That's basically the content. Now, we move on the definitions. Okay. And meanings as used in the standard. Okay. Yang pertama, saya letak kat sini adalah Act 242. Okay. Act 242 refer to Apa? Apa? Means the valuers, appraisers and estate agents Act 1981 amended, as amended. Okay? So, it's good kalau you ada extra income, duit, lebih sikit, beli akta ni. Estate agent Act 1981. Okay, dalam kelas real estate law sepatutnya, insyaAllah, your lecturers can cover. Okay, and then Act 318. Apa dia Act 318? The Strata Title Act 1985. Okay, and then the Act 757. Apa dia? The Strata Management Act 2013. Okay, which effective 1 June 2015. Safe opening on 12 June 2015. Then, in the definitions and meaning as used, there is a word bought, B-O-A-R-D, bought. What does it mean by bought? Okay, bought in this standard refer to boards of valuers, appraisers, and estate agent malicious. Okay, malicious. Okay, then, maintenance account. Apa dia maintenance account? Account required to be open and maintained by a developer. Dia stated dalam definition tu. Okay. Joint management body. Management corporation or subsidiary management corporation under section 10, 23, 50, 60, or 66. Okay. As the case, maybe in the X757, for purposes of general maintenance, services, and management in relation to the common property in a stratified development area. So, Stratified development area. Apa maksud stratified development area? Stratified tu apa? Maksudnya bangunan yang bertingkat. Okay. Then, the definitions of bylaws. Okay. Saya letak sini. Bylaws. Apa dia bylaws? Means the bylaws which are in operation in respect of the building or land intended for subdivision. Okay for subdivision into parcels of the subdivided building or land and the common property. Okay? Right? So, macam mana nak tahu dia? Nanti kalau, if you belajar real estate law, you can tell it. Okay? They prescribe, it's prescribed by the regulations 
in the third schedule of the strata management maintenance and management regulations 2015 tadi made under section 158757 for regulating the control management administration use and enjoyment of the building and land intended for subdivision into parcels of the subdivided building or land and the common property or that the B as you can see not provided for in any additional bylaws made under section 52 70 or 71 of act 757 okay and then there is a definition of charges okay kalau dalam property management kita cakap charges tu apa Okay, and it's clearly stated in the standard. Standard cakap apa? Any money collected to be paid into the maintenance account. Money collected to be paid into the maintenance account. Itu adalah charges. And then commissioner. Apa oh, commissioner ni? Right? What is commissioner? What is so important commissioner? Apa? C-O-B Kita biasa dengar kan? Commissioner Commissioner of Buildings Commissioner means the Commissioner of Buildings Ataupun C-O-B Appointed Deputy Commissioner And other officers Appointed Under subsection 4 Subsection 1 To what? To exercise the powers to perform the duties imposed on the commissioners. Okay. And then, the word common property. What is common properties? Bila cakap pasal property management, mesti ada words common properties. So, apa common properties? Right? So, you have to refer in the definition. Okay. There are the two in relation. Yang pertama. Okay, what is common properties? In relations to a building or land intended for subdivision into parcels, which mm -hmm. is strata building, certified to, means so much of the development area, satu, as is not comprised of any parcel or proposed parcel. Maksudnya unit yang kita beli tu tidak dikira sebagai common area. Used or capable of being used or enjoyed by occupiers of two or more parcels or proposed parcels. Or B, okay, in relation to a subdivided building or land means so much of the lot as it is not comprised in any parcel, including by accessories, parcel or any provisional block as shown in a certified strata plan. And use or capable of being used or enjoyed by occupiers of two more persons. Okay? Right. So, kalau if you refer to the um, standard tadi, it's clearly, kalau you tengok ni dalam definition ni yang saya bacakan tadi tu, okay, dia ada. What is it means by, for example, uh, tak takkan berapa, okay. Okay, kat sini, uh, charges, okay, commissioners, and common properties, right? Okay, small ada kat situ. And then all the definition kat sini. Put, ada, kali ting. Okay, so please read. Okay, this is definition and this is the punya. What? So call. Okay. Okay. So call as a, the meaning and definition. Semua ni kena faham. Okay, kena faham, kena baca. So, tolong baca. Nanti dia banyak sangat tu. Right? Okay. Okay. Baca balik nanti. Kalau tak faham, tanya. Okay? Right. So, so dalam standard one, okay, dia ada discuss detail ni tentang property management. Right? Apa dia property management? Saya explain sikit. Okay? Dalam standard uh, Malaysia ni, okay, Dia kata, apa? Property management is a regulated professional practice governed by the Valuers, Appraisers and Estate Agents Act 1981 
Act to Photo, which defines property management and the role of property managers in the management of projects. Right? The standard specifies the duties, qualification, and code of conduct. Apa the code of conduct? Tata cara. Maksudnya, um, getting all integrity, code of conduct lah. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Of the property manager so that the client as well as the general public. Okay. Tujuan uh, standard ni. Okay. Supaya uh, the standard jaga the client as well as the public. Assured of the high standard of services, right? High standard of service that will be provided by the professional property managers. Ni yang saya cakap tadi, ada ke property managers ada yang pro, bukan professional property managers? Ada. Ada maksudnya yang professional adalah yang diiktiraf di bawah board, okay? Dan dia tertakluk pada code of conduct yang dikeluarkan oleh board, okay? Right? So, apa statement of standard ni yang penting? Okay, saya akan pergi kepada stat, uh, statement of standard. Okay, 1.2.1 sampai 1.2.6. Right, this is very important. Yang pertama, the property manager shall comply with the provisions of Act 242, Act 318 and Act 757 yang kita dah define tadi. Masa definitions and meanings. Okay, right. As well as all relevant regulation. It's not limited to Act 242, Act 318 and Act 757 but as well as all relevant regulations, standards with the Board of Valuers, Appraisers and Estate Agents Malaysia. Maksudnya kita as you as property manager, professional property manager ni governed by Malaysia's punya board. Okay, what else? The property manager shall be qualified. Ah, macam mana nak, nak pastikan you qualified? So, mesti graduate degree yang recognized by board. Your degree ni insyaAllah being recognized by board. Competent. Qualified. And then competent and experience in managing real estate and shall be registered with the board of values, appraisers and estate agent Malaysia. Even you qualified, the grad, hmm, competent, you have the experience yang banyak, tapi you tak registered dengan board. So, you're not being recognized as professional property manager under the act. Okay? Right. So, tiga. The property manager shall ensure that all contracts of the service provided. So, this is another word, service provided. Okay? Dekat definition and meaning ni ada. Service provided maksudnya? Uh, company yang bagi perkhidmatan kepada um, properties yang you manage for example cleaning services suppliers, okay contractors, vendors and uh, apa lagi, suppliers, okay assign sign, maknanya ada bukti kat situ, by the client unless The property manager is required and authorized in writing by the client to sign off any of the contracts on behalf of the client. Dalam konteks client ni, dalam konteks standard ni, client dia refer kepada siapa? Refer kepada, tadi kita cakap apa? Owner. Owner of the properties. Okay? So that's why apa-apa nak buat, kita kata tadi kan, ada berlaku penyerahan executive function. They transfer, they, re, they reveal all the executive function for the product managers. Okay? Right? But then, 1.2.3 in statement of standard saying, okay, the property manager shall ensure that all contracts of the service providers, when a contract, bila kita appoint orang, dia bisa ada contract of details, right? All the contracts, okay, of the service providers, contractors, vendors, suppliers are signed by the client. Itu satu. But, melainkan ni kata, unless the property manager is required and authorized. Maksudnya, diperlukan dan dibenarkan in writing. Okay, ada surat kebenaran daripada client, by the client to sign any of the contracts on behalf of the client. 
Okay, faham tak? 1.2.4 The property manager shall sign important reports and documents prepared by him. So, you're going to sign, endorse. You prepare, you endorse. Kalau you prepare, you tak endorse, itu tidak, itu tak boleh claim. Tak boleh claim maksudnya itu bukan from your expert professional opinion as property manager. You can sign. Okay, hmm. apa lagi? 1.2.5 which is uh, quite uh, important. The property manager shall be honest and independent and shall adhere to the code of conduct and ethics. Uh -huh. That's why kita dah panggil professional. Awal-awal itu kan dalam kelas kata what is professional, how to become professional. Professional ni maksudnya di um, di 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 Hongkong maknanya mesti patuh kepada uh, code of conduct yang telah ditetapkan di bawah port dan dia ada ethics dan dia ada act dia. Act apa? Under act 2, 4, 2, 3, 1, 8, 7, 5, 7 and other relevant statutes and regulations. So mesti sentiasa faham So eh, maksudnya as property manager, kita sentiasa faham what is the current code of conduct, what is the current regulation, kalau ada perubahan uh, akta di parlimen misalnya ataupun enactment yang berkaitan ataupun any uh, uh, bacaan. So kita kena tengok betul-betul. Fahami betul-betul dan patuh kepada okay, uh, relevant uh, acts. Okay. 1.2.6 dia kata apa? The property manager shall be adequately covered by professional indemnity insurance. So maksud dia bila kita uh, business dan property management ni kita ambil tanggungjawab daripada owner ataupun client untuk manage property dia make sure kita kena beli indemnity insurance. So in any case uh, so kita ada insurance cover up. Okay berapa nak, berapa nak beli? Berapa banyak nak beli? Berapa banyak nak beli? Okay. Kalau kebiasaannya sekurang-kurang dia mesti lebih daripada 2 juta. 2 million. Okay. More than 2 million. Okay. Sebab you are dealing with the property. Actually, property strategy. Okay. Ada apa nak tanya? Okay. So kalau tak ada apa-apa nak tanya. Um, that's uh, details. Okay about uh, standard ni, okay, saya cakap tadi dan seterusnya kalau kita tengok on uh, standard tu, okay, a point of property manager, alright, okay, macam mana kita nak appoint property manager, that's why, uh, okay, the property manager dalam, uh, uh, okay, right, ni yang stated kat sini, satu tadi, the property manager shall comply with the provisions of act, And then shall call qualified, competent and experienced and registered shall ensure all contracts are signed by the client unless you are uh, having a writing document saying that you can sign on behalf of the client and then uh, shall sign important reports and documents prepared shall be honest and independent shall adhere to the code and conduct and ethics and of course shall be adequately covered by professional in the insurance so that's basically the uh, the property manager the professional property manager which will clearly state in the standard okay kalau you tengok dalam buku surat uh, if you go to the standard nanti dalam buku surat 1 Malaysian property management standard standard 1 they are explain about the property managers okay So it's very very important, right? So how are we going to uh, the second uh, important thing is that the appointment of a property manager, okay? So how should I appoint property manager? China, China, okay? The appointment of a property manager ni is stated in the standard two. It's clearly in the standard, okay? Di uh, di cakap macam mana kita nak appoint. Macam mana seorang perempuan saja boleh kita boleh appoint. Alright. Of course it must be competent, right? Okay. Okay. Apa perkara yang at least dalam property management tu yang you tahu dari segi knowledge, okay. Uh, you, you kena faham real estate finance. Memang you belajar property management subject to become how to manage a property tapi kita belajar juga subject real estate finance. 
Okay. And then belajar juga real estate law. Right. So masa belajar real estate law tu please relate real estate law, real estate finance dengan real, dengan property management subject. And then taxation. Ha, apakah tax te- yang perlu dibayar, macam mana nak kira tax, so what not. Okay. So kena faham tu. And of course building, construction and maintenance. So normally kelemahan uh, property manager ni sebab kita kurang dari segi teknikal tak macam engineer, mechanical, electrical, awam dia faham sangat. So but then it's not for you to become ja- uh, like a engineer but at least you must competent. Okay. Uh, of the knowledge to manage. That's why the understanding of building manage, uh, constructions, building management and maintenance is very important. In fact, dalam kita punya week, uh, content, weekly schedule tu kita ada letak building management. Nanti kita akan go uh, macam mana. It's not as detailed as uh, engineer but at least they can give you some um, ideas on the building management. In fact, dalam kita belajar building services atau building technology, that is the best platform sebenarnya for you to really understand on the building construction sebenarnya. Okay. Right? Okay. So, macam mana nak engage uh, property manager? Right? The engagement of a pro- professional property manager is contractual in nature. What was it contractual in nature? You are bound with the contract. The contract itself belajar dulu um, menundang contract. So apa dia syarat contract. So maksudnya once you engage, you are bind by the contract. That's why itu yang dikatakan contractual in nature. Okay. Right. So because it, it is contractual in nature, what the property manager should do. Okay. So shall enter into written agreement with your client atau his client. Okay, in respect of his appointment as a property manager. Okay. Make sure you have a written appointment. Dia tak boleh cakap mulut je. Okay lah, saya, klien kata, you ni bagus lah. I appoint lah you, manage bangunan I boleh? You pun minim semangat. It's not that. It must be written, bertulis. It must be an agreement of that. Okay. Faham? So kalau you baca 2.1.1 in the standard, they clearly stated the engagement of a professional property manager is contractual in nature. Therefore, it is important that the property manager ensures that he obtains a written appointment to manage from the owner of the management committee of management corporation or the joint management committee of joint management body or the commission of buildings will be as the case may be hereafter referred to as the client followed by an agreement or contract. Maksudnya kena ada written appointment dulu, appointment letter and then followed by the contract. Okay. So, contract ataupun agreement. Apa yang mesti ada dalam agreement tadi? Satu, mesti ada written uh, appointment. Right? Appointment letter. Macam itulah. Okay, appointment to and then followed by agreement of contract. So, apa yang mesti ada dalam contract? Okay. So, you, the standard saying that as for. Yang pertama, you mesti ada scope of work. Okay, that's why the agreement must include the scope of work. Satu, yang kedua, the professional fees. Okay, right. The term of period of appointment and the relevant terms and conditions. Dalam uh, statement of standard 2.2.0 uh, and then 2.2.2, they clearly stated, okay. Yang pertama, the scope of work in the service to be provided by the property manager and the scope of work in the service. The professional fees, disbursement, taxes, salaries and other payments agreed upon, okay. Term of period of appointment and the relevant terms and condition of his engagement. Then baru kita kata, okay, you are in a safeguard that you are being appointed. So, based on this appointment, by the end of the day kita kata, right, property manager 
at least have three major responsibility, which is financial management, physical management, and administrative management. Physical to buildings, business financial on the ROI, taxation, okay, right, and administrative management to termasuk juga you kena faham the con the the code of law, okay, or the record, or managing a record, insurance and whatnot. So sebanyak banyak tu kita boleh uh, gabungkan kepada three major responsibility and then dari pecahan tadi, okay. So soalan kat situ. For you to think, what do you think the primary differences would be between residential property management and commercial property management? Okay, so based on your understanding and what is property management, based on your understanding on uh, the role of property manager and how you appoint property manager based on the standard that you need, right? Based on the standard. So that's it. Is there any differences? If you are managing residential properties, okay, or commercial property. Ada, ber, ada perbezaan. Okay, tak perlu jawab sekarang. Balik, baca, cari bahan bacaan, fikirkan, faham apa dia residential properties, apa dia commercial properties. Okay, dan kaitkan dengan act ni tadi. Okay, kaitkan dengan the duty of property manager. Okay, so is there any differences? Okay, kalau ada, apa beza dia? Kalau tak ada, kenapa dia tak berbeza? Okay, so that's basically right. Okay, so ada soalan tak? Okay. Kalau tak ada soalan, okay, so that's basically the standard. So, masuk je seterusnya nanti, okay, kita akan terus pergi ke standard tiga. Dalam standard tiga ni, dia cakap tentang handings over of properties. Okay, itu yang saya kata tadi. Setiap dalam perkara-perkara dalam standard ni, kita cover dalam kuliah. Okay, cuma hari ni saya nak tunjukkan bahawa betapa uh, pentingnya you refer to standard dan faham standard supaya dia menjadi naskah untuk you refer bila you kerja. Dan sentiasa update dengan uh, standard yang terkini. Okay, alright. So that basically um, uh, the lecture today. Okay, we have two series of lectures. Okay, for this uh, week, which is uh, last week and this week is for introductions of what is property manager, uh, manager, property management, in fact, the basic of management and what is the property. And today, uh, we go through a first uh, introduction, standard one and standard two as per property management standard, right? So, before next week, okay, please really understand what exactly that, um, uh, you know, what exactly that you are saying, what exactly that you understand and please uh, familiar with the words, you know, macam definition tadi kan, COB, co uh, common building, and then kita ada akta-akta, kalau dapat beli akta ni sangat bagus kan, akta serata, misalnya nanti kita akan satu chapter on akta serata, kita tak pergi detail macam mana you belajar law, Tapi kita tengok how this akta reflects, what are, uh, which akta yang sangat penting untuk kita fahami in the practice of property managers. Okay? Alright. Ada apa soalan? Okay. Kalau tak ada apa soalan, uh, kalau ada soalan pun saya tak boleh dengar sebab kita buat live streaming ni. Uh, tapi please uh, state your soalan uh, dekat ruangan komen uh, ataupun chat. Alright. So insyaAllah kita akan uh, improve, okay, so, so, kalau tak ada apa-apa, I think um, uh, that is our class today, right, so it's about one hour 45 minutes as per schedule, okay, uh, sekejap lagi ada tutorial, sebagaimana tutorial yang kita dah bincang um, lepas, uh, please refer to e-learning, ada soalan dan submit, okay, Soalan-soalan tutorial. Soalan-soalan tutorial tu sangat penting untuk uh, difahami, untuk you buat. It's very, it's, nampak macam uh, susah uh, ataupun nampak macam senang nak jawab tu buat my name and what not tapi uh, it's quite uh, helpful for you, for you to improve and understand the knowledge. Okay. And tolong baca standard ni. 
Okay, sebelum next class. Next class nanti kita akan cakap pasal property economic. Property economic tak ada because it's, it's about market, apa tu, economic forces, right? But uh, there is a content of standard three, for example, handing over, baca dulu. Okay, sebelum kita pergi in details, in practice. Right? Okay? Okay. So, I rasa uh, itu saja pada saya for today class. Um, I really hope that you can you can cope uh, with this uh, subject. Okay, you can really understand what is the basic uh, uh, fundamentals of property management before we go further. Okay, please faham dulu apa the property management, what is the context, what is the concept, and how is the standards uh, important to you. Okay, uh, look at the bigger pictures, the context and concept, so that bila kita pergi detail nanti. Oh, Oh, uh, then over maintenance, finance, you already know what I, what I actually I doing. Okay? Then, kalau uh, rajin, then saya harapkan baca any books uh, or journals or any reports that, that explains uh, property management. Kalau you tengok YouTube pun, uh, banyak sangat explanation sama ada daripada uh, you tengok YouTube on SR Azman. Okay, it's quite good too. Uh, good um, uh, lecture, okay, explanations on property management, okay, and that's also one is one of the prominent uh, practice practitioner, okay, within property management industries in Malaysia. So, bagus sih dia. And then selain itu ada juga uh, explanation daripada luar negara, okay, the concept, concept. So, uh, apa maksudnya you have to make yourself familiar with the words. Okay, no more jargon words because you dah already tahun dua. I say it's about time for you to really understand, for you to really love your career by uh, um, really understand what exactly this property management profession. Okay? Okay guys, uh, jaga diri baik-baik. Uh, saya doa, darati, doa semua orang selamat insyaAllah dari segala macam ancaman sama ada ancaman. Uh, berbentuk kesihatan ataupun ancaman berbentuk kemurungan ataupun ancaman macam-macam uh, lah macam-macam masalah dan sekiranya ada apa-apa isu ada apa-apa masalah uh, don't hesitate, jangan segar untuk jangan takut okay, untuk begitu saya ataupun untuk terhati okay? uh, kalau soalan tu common, better tanya dekat whatsapp group kita tapi kalau soalan tu mungkin sangat personal anda juga InsyaAllah, bila ada masa saya tengok tu, saya akan reply. Kalau saya tak reply immediate, saya akan reply bila masa saya ada. Okay? Alright? Okay. I think you are very good today. So, take care again. So, sekian daripada saya. Saya sudah dengan Wabila Taufiq. Wabila Taufiq. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dan salam sejahtera. Jadi, bye-bye.